10 years what the Lafayette Parish school system is going to look like. Yes. So um, <laughs> lots of back and forth. You know, social media is so great in so many ways. It is it is a conduit for information. Information moves fast. It seems like, from the school board's perspective at least, there's been a lot of misinformation um, about this. Of course, there are going to be your never, no, I pay enough taxes, I don't want any, and my kids go to private school, no. There's going to be that vote. And that's okay. And that's okay. And then there's the vote of, I'm not going to vote for it for reasons A, B, and C. And maybe A and B are semi-correct, but not quite. And that's been, I think, a big challenge with this for you guys. Sure. You know, and uh, I don't even want to call it misinformation. I don't want to believe that anybody is, is intentionally out there uh, muddying the waters and, and, and putting out information that's false. But, you know, there's some, some misunderstandings, at least, on, yeah. on what the ballot actually says and what, the, what we're actually proposing to the voters of Lafayette Parish. So let's talk about, uh, just, just off the top, kind of the 30,000-foot view. With all the taxes that you get, why can't these projects be done with the funding that's there. So one of the one of the things that we found when we were researching all of this was what has the funding level of the Lafayette Parish School System done over the last 10 years? And because I know, most everyone knows, property taxes have risen, sales tax collections have risen over the last 10 years. But what we found was that when you adjust the revenue collections for inflation, we've actually had about an $11 million increase over the mm-hmm. last 10 years. So when we start in 2006 and we go to 2016, the increase isn't very dramatic. On top of that, what we are forced to do, what the federal government and the state government love to do, is they love to pass laws and tell us exactly what we have to do and then say, oh, by the way, we're not giving you any money to do this. Okay, And so combined with federal and state unfunded mandates, the I think I've mentioned to you before that our uh, our insurance plan – for our employees yeah, and our retirees, and retirees yeah. it's going up by $17, $17 million a year just in the last six years. So that entire $11 million increase that I just spoke about has more than been eaten up mm-hmm. by the cost of health insurance going up. So the, the district is not growing at a pace that has kept up with you, your building, but you're not able to necessarily keep up with the small projects that you have, the, the portable buildings. We know there are a bunch at Lafayette High spread out all over the place, and that's going to be the real focus of this. Sure, and and I'd like to point out, too, that with the, the current maintenance fund money, you know, we spend about $6 million a year on maintenance and construction. The the We have replaced portable buildings throughout the parish. We just can't replace any more. And so this 420 portable classrooms that we have is the result after the last five or six years of spending $6 million a year doing our best to get rid of portable buildings mm-hmm. in the parish. So you guys have kind of been out and about. Um, The superintendent's been very active in this, the rest of the board, um, kind of on a tour, looking at going to meet with different groups, pretty much anyone who would talk to you. What is the one thing that has shocked you, a belief about the school system, about, about how much funding you do have in place already, that you're just like, that number is so wrong? I think I think the biggest shock to me was that there's somebody it's, somebody said we spend seventeen thousand dollars per student every year, which is, yeah. and then they say it's it's more than any prep school in the area. Which, if seventeen thousand dollars were true, then yes, yes, it would be more than every prep school in the area. What it is is our, our total tax collections come out to about eleven thousand three hundred dollars per student, which is a big enough number. I don't know why people have to exaggerate it, mm-hmm. but. I'm not going to hide from that number. I'd like to have a discussion with the voters and say, look, this is what we're spending our money on. This is what it costs to educate children in the 21st century. Let's let's just have a discussion and see what we want to do instead of uh, instead of inflating the number by almost 50 percent. What about the uh, the language uh, specifically yeah. the for any lawful purpose part of it? Um, I'm pretty sure when the, the concern first came up, you had brought on our show soon after that. And that's been a few weeks ago where. If you read further into the sentence, it's for any lawful purpose within this. Explain that a little bit. For any lawful purpose subject to the limitations of Resolution 01-17-1896. I'm getting very good at saying that on Facebook. Because you, yeah. Because because that is a a misperception about this this ballot language. What we did find, we spent a lot of time and effort coming up, uh, finding Attorney General's opinions that supported, you know, basically, if you're going to build an airport terminal, it's very easy to put airport terminal. In the ballot language, but we're faced with a 200 word limit on the ballot proposition. And so how do we put 12 campuses and exactly what it is we're going to do? And we found some opinions that said if you list a construction plan on the ballot, the construction plan becomes a law with the ballot proposition. Okay. And so that's why we put in there, 
Yeah, if if you don't say subject to the limitations of resolution 01-17-1896, it's not dedicated. So that makes the construction plan for those 12 campuses, the 400 plus portables, replacing that law as 200, well. 248 portable buildings. Oh, two, sorry, 248 portables. That becomes law as well. Should voters vote yes on Saturday? Absolutely. So, it, so the word dedicated gets asked and thrown around. That essentially makes it dedicated. That is what makes it dedicated. I would say that section one of that resolution, the very first thing in that resolution, it says the board shall use the proceeds for facilities, construction, improvements, land acquisition, mm-hmm. uh, you know, all the things related to facilities themselves. All right. And, and any any legitimate concerns that you've heard so far that you guys have been able to kind of retool kind of what your focus is? I mean, we know the kids at Milton – uh, elementary, you know, that was, is it Milton Elementary, uh, where, they, where the kids were out in the rain? Yes. That kind of thing. You know, I think when you kind of see those pictures and you see that, you know, there are going to be legitimate concerns for those parents. If you don't have a student that goes there or a student that's affected, maybe you have some questions. No, I mean, we've heard legitimate concerns, and I've done my best to address those concerns to people who, um, people on Facebook, they have legitimate questions. I want to give them the answers and let them make their own decision. Yeah. Like I've said before, uh, opposition is okay. I'm not expecting to to get 100% of the people of, of the parish on board. What we wanted to do was we wanted to present a, a question to the voters that said, hey, you know, can we can we get rid of some of these portable buildings and make our, our facilities not be shanty towns mm-hmm. behind our behind our campuses? And what I've really found is I think we're we're paying for the sins of the past past school boards. Yeah. And I would I always remind people, say, two years ago. You elected seven new school board members. Mm-hmm. Of the seven, none of us had ever held office before. All we are are parents and residents and, and, and community leaders who are concerned about our public education and what that means for the future of yeah. Lafayette Parish. And after, after looking at everything, this is the best proposition that we could come up with to ask the voters, can we earn your trust to take this small step to bring in our campuses into the 21st century. And I would imagine since you weren't on the school board back then, and you can kind of recognize where maybe more maintenance, not not maintenance per se, but, you know, more things should have been done along the way so we weren't in this situation. Well, sure, but, you know, look, it took us 30 years, 40 years to get into this situation. This didn't happen overnight. Yeah. This was a, a sustained, and I believe that the school boards of the past were doing what they thought was the best thing, the best decisions at the time, but... These temporary buildings, these metal buildings, they were meant to be short-term fixes, and they've become all too permanent on our campuses. Have you, like, gone, uh, because I know people are going to ask this, too, and it's just another way of kind of asking things that we've already asked you, but if if you look at one section, like, I don't know, buses, for example, um, I know that right now they don't have enough people to drive the buses. I know that because, and I see it on Facebook, too, all these mamas and daddies that are really ticked off because their kids aren't getting picked up. But um, can transportation not be squeezed a little bit more to get more money out of that department? Um, are we doing are we doing it as efficiently as we could? Do changes need to be made in that department, in transportation, with the drivers? Are we eliminating those inefficiencies, for example? I'm just pulling one thing out of my head because I saw something on Facebook yesterday, and it reminded me that drivers are still needed. Absolutely. Um, I've got a really good answer for you because we have focused heavily on transportation in the 30 months that we've been in office. We've actually cut $3 million out of the transportation budget. Mm-hmm. And one of the really big cost savings is going to be whenever rezoning takes effect in the fall. One of the really like kind of secondary benefits of that is we're going to eliminate about 10 bus routes. Mm-hmm. which means we're not going to be actually laying off any drivers. We're just going to reduce the need by 10, mm-hmm. right, because we don't have enough bus drivers now, so we're going to reduce the need by 10. But not having those 10 buses on the road, because mm-hmm. right now we have to hire substitutes and all this right. other stuff, not having those 10 buses on the road saves us about $50,000 a piece. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about half a million dollars a year from the rezoning. So when, that's going to, when will we realize those savings? August. In August. Yes. And we'll realize that savings by how much? Half August. a million, half a million dollars recurring every year. Every year. Every year. That we'll and see. that's on top of the three million dollars that we've already cut out of the transportation budget mm-hmm. by eliminating positions and and trying to, um, you know, we actually bought mm-hmm. buses instead of leasing them, mm-hmm. which is going to save I think a million and a half over ten years, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. No, we focused heavily on transportation because 
you know, the, the law of budgeting is you're not going to get any big savings unless you attack your big line items. Mm-hmm. And transportation is one of the biggest. Okay, let me pull another one out of the air then. These are just questions I've heard, too. Go ahead. The, what about, okay, there, so there was so much made about the janitorial services when the former superintendent was here because then Thad Welch was in that position. He didn't have the high school diploma. Some people said the reason people were attacking him so much is because he went in and really shook things up and that there are still tons of inefficiencies now because it's same old, same old. Now, again, that's things that, you know, those are questions that are out there on Facebook. This is not Bernie saying this. I'm just asking you. These are things that people think about when these tax issues come up sure of course um you know we still have some issues with janitorial services i mm-hmm. guess you know schools aren't as sometimes they aren't as clean sometimes mm-hmm. issues pop up but i always we, say like is there any savings to be realized there can we make dramatic changes there to to save money on an annual basis i don't know if we could do that just because you know at the end of the day somebody has to push a broom mm-hmm. somebody has to mop the floor right this sure. isn't something that we can say all right well we're gonna cut two janitors right and and just have dirtier schools, Mm -hmm. you know, so this is at the end of the day, you know, education is a very labor intensive. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Gosh, no doubt. You know, I saw something the other day that says, you know, the school system spends 80% of their money on, on personnel salaries and everything like that. And I said, well, you know, it's, you know, you got to have a teacher in the classroom. You got to have a lady in the cafeteria. You got to have a janitor pushing a broom. You got to have a Mm -hmm. principal. You got to have a bus driver. You got to have a librarian. You got to have all of these things that Mm -hmm. are not automated or able to be automated in any fashion, mm-hmm. you know, this, this is a very labor intensive product that we're, that we're delivering. So gosh. Okay. Now I think we've asked you this question before, but I'm curious if the measure doesn't pass, for example, on Saturday, it just means you just kind of keep doing things the way you're doing them. And we're doing things very well the way mm-hmm. we're doing them. You know, we're on the way, we're on our way. We're on the cusp of being an A-rated mm-hmm. school system. We increased 7.1 points since Dr. Aguilar was hired. We're, we're very confident that the education that we're delivering is and is going to continue to be excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to continue spending $6 million a year on maintenance and construction and getting rid of portable buildings and uh, building covered walkways and and just doing what we can. To be able to get it done. All makes sense. Just We're not going to sacrifice education. I know that. Mm-hmm. All good. Okay. All good. That Justin. was very forceful. Well, we're not. <laughs> we're not. No, and I'm, I'm glad it is so that, you, you know, people realize, look, we're here for the benefit of kids. And, and look, you know, one of those mailers that in opposition that got sent out last week was from Washington, somebody, somebody in Washington, D.C., some PAC in Washington, D.C. And, mm-hmm. and I would, I was talking to my wife the other night, and I was like, you know, you see this right here? I said, Pass or fail, succeed or fail on Saturday. The people who sent this mail are from Washington, D.C. They they don't care because their kids don't go here. They're not going to have to live with the results. Mm-hmm. You know, if it passes, they're not going to have to pay the, the half penny. Mm-hmm. And if it fails, their children are, are not going to be stuck in tin cans Do you know, behind the schools. So one of the things Rob was talking about this morning was the amount of teachers versus the administration. Yeah, that was one of the questions that came up on a very lengthy social media thread uh, which was a, it was basically a, an ask me anything to Justin. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, yeah, people yeah. were just throwing out things that they had heard, and it really gave you an opportunity to kind of answer back. Um, how many employees there are in the district versus versus how many of them are teachers? So I, I remember the thread. I believe the answer was 2,512 employees with teaching certificates, and we have four, I, I think if you said 4,100 total employees, that mm-hmm. would be so So a little bit accurate. more than half. Yeah, I think it was like 60%. Okay. Something like that. So that, yeah, so there, it's not some overreaching, mm-hmm. maybe only 20% are teachers. I mean. No, it's not. But you do, yeah. <laughs> it's not. But you, but you do need, you do need that, as you said, that support staff that's there as well. Sure. You know, that can't be automated. Yeah, when you open a school, you know, if you have one student, right, you, what, what, you, what do you mm-hmm. need? You need are a there, classroom, a school, a bus driver, a. Are there federal positions that also have to be filled? Like. Yes, in but, your central administrative staff or something, you have to have a, I don't know, a director of Title I counseling funds. or something. Okay, director of Title right. I funds, for example. So the federal money we get, which I think is right around $37 million a year, mm-hmm. uh, anything, any program related to that 
gets paid for out of that money. Now, mm-hmm. if, we, if we decided we wanted to use that money for uh, buildings instead of the federal programs, mm-hmm. the federal government would come in and take that sure, money away. Sure. Right. So okay. anything that gets added because of money the federal government gives, which is never enough, ne- never as much as they tell us we have to spend, mm-hmm. but any money that any programs that get put in because of that money gets spent out of that money. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there are positions that you cannot. You have to have a these positions. Well, it was one of the points on on that thread you were talking mm-hmm. about, right? It's that okay, so we have thirty seven million dollars a year in Title One funds. We have twenty five million dollars a year from the half cent sales tax for teacher salaries. We have twenty five million dollars a year from the half cent sales tax for retiree health care benefits that was approved by the voters in nineteen eighty seven. This is money we can't spend on on facilities, mm-hmm. you know. So if you if you think we should cut free lunches, mm-hmm. then okay, that that's great. We're just but we're just not going to have free lunches anymore. We're not going to have buildings because of it. Mm-hmm. You know, it makes sense. All right, we'll continue to update you on this throughout the week. Uh, we'll talk to you, of course, next week after we kind of know where this is going and then where the the district and the rest of the school board wants to go as well. Justin Santani, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, guys. Have a great uh, rest of your week. Good you luck too. On Saturday, seven forty-five now at News Talk ninety-six five KPL.